Hello, Klaus here, and welcome back to yet another video here at the channel. In today's video, we're going to have a look at what were just announced at the Blackmagic presentation at NAB 2025. And we're just going to go through what kind of announcement that they did announce here at NAB. So let's just go right to that. So first off, Blackmagic did announce a Blackmagic cloud backup system that's going to give you the possibility to back up your storage from the Blackmagic cloud into relatively inexpensive hard drives. And that's going to be a pretty good thing if we want to store and save all of your media, I think. And then they went into the broadcast part of the presentation talking about routers like Video Hub, and they had three different versions of that, the one bigger than the other doing more different things things. They went into converters. Uh, Blackmagic has a long history of doing converters. So they had like a trillion of those. It was a really long presentation, by the way. It was like a three and three hour presentation. And a lot of that was spent in the broadcast. And then they went into a capture card they've just created, turning that into a presentation about the Atom box, which had 80 inputs and 48 outputs. Then that turned into the HyperDeck Shuttle Pro demonstration where they show what the HyperDeck Shuttle can do, how you can do that and combining that with the ATEM control panel, using that together with the ATEM mini camera control, which will make you or which will let you control your camera, the settings of your camera. And then they did announce the Atom Mini Extreme ISO, which is a very, very long name. And then they had like a section where they talked about streaming solutions and that being things like the Blackmagic Cloud streaming router, where you can kind of use Blackmagic Cloud as your router system. I'm not very much into broadcast stuff, so that's a bit hard for me to explain, but um, Grant does a very good job in the presentation. So you can see the full presentation, of course, if you have three hours to spend. Uh, and then also they did a new thing in the Blackmagic Cloud, which was the Atom Cloud switching system, where you can use the Blackmagic Cloud as a switcher, combining that with Atom stuff. And then we came to the thing that I was looking most forward to, to in this presentation, and that was the announcement of DaVinci Resolve 20. And DaVinci Resolve 20 looks very, very interesting. It has more than 100 new features and a lot of AI tools, uh, things like AI Music Editor that will let AI help you to make your song longer if it doesn't fit for your edit or shorter. Looks very interesting. You can now also, if you're editing to the beat, actually show where the beats are in the timeline. That's a new thing. And also AI audio mixing is now available as well. So you can use artificial intelligence to better audio mix your films, which is kind of cool if you're not um, a sound engineer, I think. Then there is a multi-text tool, looks cool as well. There is a new record voiceover available in the edit page. And of course, m one of my favorite tools in DaVinci Resolve is the Magic Mask. It has now a AI version, which is going to make it even better than before. And of course, you can still use the old version. You can choose that as well. I'm very excited about this update. I'm going to make more videos about DaVinci Resolve, obviously. So stick around for that. And then we went into some Blackmagic Cloud things, mainly talking about how to get more storage and some updates coming to Blackmagic Cloud as well. And then we went into the camera section of the presentation and I was actually surprised to hear about this one coming a new update to or camera, a new camera update to the 6K full frame, which is going to give it uh, autofocus. And that looked very interesting. They tested that out. So maybe I'll test that out with my camera. If I have a lens that's actually supporting that, I'm not really sure I have. Then we had a look at the Ursa Cine 17K. Uh, and the price and stuff like that. Then there were some new things for the Pixis uh, 
like, like making the pixels work for broadcasting, which were a um, handle and a side grip, making it more like a video camera. Um, really interesting uh, to new accessories for the Pixis. And then the last thing, of course, were the Pixis 12K, which is taking the 12K sensor from the uh, Ursa Cine 12K and putting that into the Pixis body uh, at uh, around $5,000. So I do think that Blackmagic had a pretty good presentation, some pretty interesting new products. And of course, we are going to dive into more of that in upcoming videos here at the channel. Please consider to subscribe, push that notification bell if you want to be notified every time there's a new video here at the channel. Until next time, keep filming, keep learning and keep sharing.